Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I am here to do a tag. This is my favorite things tag. This tag was created by Tori at Hufflepuff Discovery, and I was tagged by Jim over Jim's Books, Reading, and Stuff. And this tag has 13 prompts. Prompt number one. Who is your favorite musician band? I have to admit that I don't listen to a lot of music nowadays. When I was um, in my 20s, I briefly dated the daughter of a famous classical pianist, and a gentleman does not tell, and she turned me on to classical music. And I was a subscriber to the, the National Symphony Orchestra for many years. After I got married, um, my wife really wasn't interested in going to classical concerts, so I went on my own for a few years. And then we moved further and further from the cities, and um, I just didn't want to drive out to listen to music. It was too far. And um, I had discovered audiobooks in 1997. So whenever I was in the car, I would, I would no longer listen to music. I would listen to audiobooks. And then in, when I discovered Audible, and you could listen to Audible books on an iPod, I basically completely abandoned listening to music almost altogether. I still will listen to music now and then. Um, it's usually classical. Um, for a musician or band, as I said, um, I listened to a lot of the National Symphony Orchestra because they were the local orchestra for me back then. Um, even though I live in Virginia now, I, I would never attempt to drive up to D.C. to go see them again. It's just too far away. So I guess the National Symphony Orchestra would have been my favorite band, although I don't think they'd call them a band. If you want to go for music, a band, I don't know, early Pink Floyd, maybe Velvet Underground. Prompt number two. What are your top three favorite films? Chinatown, that'd be my first one. Um, I think that is just a great little mystery story. I like the slower pace. Um, I like the fact that there's not a whole lot of gunplay or action and adventure. And Jack Nicholson is just hilarious in that film. Just, yeah, you know, he fella. And it has one of the greatest endings of a movie of all time. My uh, next would probably be The Seven Samurai. Um, that is just a beautiful film to watch. It's old, black and white. It's kind of slow, but it's just a deep and moving film. Third after that would be Das Boot. Um, I'm not sure why I love that. It's just that that whole cramped in a submarine during World War II, and it's just, you can feel the stink on those men's body watching that movie. And um, great adventure story. I did try to read the book afterwards, and I, I just could not get into the book after seeing the movie. Three, what is your favorite scent? I love the smell of a fireplace with the wood burning, that, that, that wood burning smell in the middle of winter. Um, it's been a long time really since I've had a lot of that smell, um, mostly because I spent <laughs> the past 15 years in Washington state and um, we don't get a lot of cold weather in the part of Washington where I lived in. Um, we did occasionally, visit, my wife and I occasionally visited um, a town called Leavenworth, which is just over the mountains. And they did have a B and B, a beautiful German reproduction B and B, and they had wood burning fireplaces. And I just remember this, the smell of the, the smoked wood. Number four, what is your favorite Disney film? Um, I don't think I like any Disney films, honestly. Um, the I think Steve Donahue was mentioning that the, the breakout Disney film with the Little Mermaid. And that happened in 1989. And I had been graduated from college for a number of years by that point. And I had no reason whatsoever to go see a Disney film. Uh, my wife and I have never had kids, so we've never had to go through that ritual of watching a Disney film. 
The last Disney film I probably saw was in high school. We were taking a film class and we were uh, told to go watch Fantasia. Um, so if I had to pick a Disney film at the best, I would probably pick Fantasia. As for the rest, you know, I just don't care. Number five, what is your favorite season? Fall, absolutely. I love the, the crispness in the air and the leaves on the ground and the chill that you feel. Um, I absolutely loathe summer. It is just a terrible, terrible month. Um, winter I can endure because it's just cold and you can wear jackets. And spring is pretty good. I, I like spring well enough because um, it's the re regrowth out of winter. But fall, absolutely. Um, I hope we continue to have falls, seasons, and climate change doesn't ruin that. <clears throat> Number six, do you have a favorite seasonal drink? Um, by seasonal drink, I'm assuming it's something you only drink during this particular season. I guess I would put hot chocolate. You would drink that during fall and winter. Um, I would never try to drink that in summer. It would be just too bloody hot, so we'll go with hot chocolate. Number seven, do you have a favorite t-shirt or article of clothing? Probably not. Um, I do have a wide variety of t-shirts that some people have commented on these videos. Um, the one I'm wearing right now is pretty close to being a favorite. I picked this up when I was visiting Chicago. They had an exhibition of the Expressionist painters and I always love um, walking through a museum and looking at paintings. So we'll go with this as a favorite or near favorite shirt. Prompt number eight. Who is your favorite author? Um, I don't like pigeonholing that. Um, I think I've mentioned this before. There are two authors who I will pre-order books if they come out with a new book. One is William T. Volman. He writes some very massive postmodernist novels. He also is very good at um, writing nonfiction. Um, you could go on for a long time about just his depth of learning and his ability to, to get words on the page right in a way that the prose just sings and it's absolutely beautiful. The second author that I will pre-order from is the mystery author, Tana French. She is out of Ireland and um, she does mysteries right. They're, they're very literary, very in depth. Um, they are a slow burn story. So you don't go into those novels seeking action and adventure. And um, she does series in a way that's very unique. Each one of her books has a different narrator. And it's usually the narrator is a secondary character from one of her previous novels because the, the primary na narrator from an earlier novel has moved on. And I think that's just a very well way to do a book. And between the, her third book and fourth book, I think there was just a brilliant transition where there was a detective in the third book that was Faithful Place. His name was Scorcher, and he was a complete asshat. And then you read the fourth book that he's going to be the narrator of the fourth, fourth book. And you go, how can you sustain a book with such an asshat as a narrator? But she does it. He's still kind of an asshat, but um, you can understand why he's an asshat. So that's just very well done. Number nine, do you have a favorite spot for reading or writing? Well, I don't write at all, um, but I do have a favorite place to read, or at least one of my favorite places. And let me turn around the camera and bring that down. There is the couch where I do a lot of my reading. Um, I do have another couch upstairs. Um, when my wife is off work, um, I usually sit up there and read with her and the cats. A lot of days I will have a cat come down and sit with me on this couch downstairs. Prompt number 10, do you have a favorite food or dessert? Um, my favorite food would probably be um, Indian. That's my favorite cuisine. Um, I love their curries, the chicken tikka masala. They have butter chicken. A lot of them have a uh, shish kebabs. Um, I don't know if I could pick a favorite one of those three, but pick those three as my favorite food. Um, 
dessert. I'll take anything with chocolate because that's just fun. Prompt number 11. What's your favorite time of day? Dusk. Um, in my previous home, we had a big picture window that was overlooking a hill and it was west facing. So you just got a brilliant sunset that was um, overlooking the city of Tacoma, Washington. And it was just lovely to sit on the couch and watch the sun go down. And unfortunately where I live now, um, my picture window is facing north. So um, you don't get those spectacular sunsets. Prompt number 12, what is your favorite color? Um, when I was early, my early 20s, I would have said absolutely black because um, I was in my early 20s and just felt like black was the best thing that you could do. Uh, nowadays, I would probably pick green or blue. Um, no real distinction between the two. Prompt number 13, what are your top three favorite YouTube channels? And this is, I'm, saying, I'm thinking channels that are not booktube channels. Um, I know I have mentioned this before, but there is a channel called Tico and the Man. This is about a man who plays guitar and he has a pet parrot that sings along. And they said every time that parrot sings better than most of the singers from the original bands that he's playing from. Another one I like is a Holy Schmidt. Um, and that is a tie, uh, channel devoted to retirement and how you can best achieve um, financial goals in retirement. And now that I am retired, I, I really do appreciate that channel. And the third channel is a new one to me. This is Zach George's Dog Training Revolution because um, I have a foster dog named Sunny and she needs a lot of training. Hello. Um, while recording my tag video and I was getting ready to upload it, I noticed that I missed two of the prompts. There were 16 prompts and not 13. Um, so prompt number 14 is, um, what is your favorite musical or play? I'm going to admit that I have not seen a whole lot of musicals. When I was in my twenties, I saw a Gilbert and Sullivan version of Iolanthe. I was on a date with a woman who really liked Gilbert and Sullivan. I thought the play was okay, but <laughs> my date, mm, not so hot. And I think that's the only musical that I've actually seen in the theater. I've probably seen a few musical films, but none stand out in my memory. As for plays, um, I used to subscribe to the Folger Shakespeare Theater in Washington, D.C. when I was in my 20s, and I really loved those plays. It was a great series. You got three Shakespeare plays a year and one non-Shakespeare play in the season. It's sort of hard to pick which my favorite is. Um, <coughs> I think my favorite may be Macbeth or maybe Henry IV Part I. It's very hard to decide. Um, and those are the ones that I've seen in the theater. As for a play that I have only read, but never seen, um, that's easy. Um, that is Waiting for Godot by Samuel Beckett. Um, when I used to work in a bookstore, one of the guys I worked with used to be an actor. And he said, of Waiting for Godot is the greatest fucking play of the 20th century. And I fucking hate it. And he had a very thick Brooklyn accent when he said that. And that was just absolutely hilarious how he, how he described that. Uh, prompt number 15 is, what is the favorite place you visited? That's a very hard one for me to decide. If I'm going from places that I visited when I was younger, I would say um, on my honeymoon, my wife and I went to uh, the islands of Bermuda, or the island of Bermuda, and that was just a fabulous place to visit. We had a hotel room and we had a moped. And it was great fun to take that moped and tool around the island and go in the back roads. And you had these um, hanging flowers over the road and you had to sort of dodge them on the moped. And that was great fun. And you also had to do it while um, driving on the left side, which was um, a little interesting for a dumb American like me. For the later part of my life, 
I would say, um, I think I enjoyed visiting Mexico the month. That Mexico the most. There was a resort my wife and I like to go to near Acamal, Mexico, that is on the Mexican Riviera, and it, it's quite enjoyable. Um, we take we've taken side trips to Tulum and Chichen Itza. Um, everyone should visit Chichen Itza. Just the the fabulous ruins of the Aztecs are a sight to behold, and those are the two tags that I missed, and I will somehow edit this into the video. Thank you. So those are my favorite things, and now I have to tag people. I'm going to tag three people. Um, I am willing to bet that these three people have been tagged before. Um, they may have even done this video. I did not see them do it, but you know, and, and don't feel any obligation to do this if you don't want to. And the three people I will tag is Sandy at Ms. Reads A Lot, Summer at Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats, and David Wiley. And that is my favorite things tag. Thank you, and have a good evening. Goodbye.